Welcome to my latest Excel Power Tips video. This in fact is an Excel pivot table power tip where I can show you how to create an effective pivot table where you can dynamically select the top end, middle end, and bottom end of a field with the values and separately outside the pivot table you can also have a selection and remain ground totals all dynamic. So here's a quick demo of my dynamic pivot table with top end, middle end, and bottom end selection slicer. So here we've got a simple data set uh, comprising of state as the item and then sales and it's been sorted in descending order so the the state with the high sales uh, California is at the top and the state with the lowest sales uh, main um, is at the bottom and the grand total is about 1.4 million so this dynamic pivot table is dynamic in terms of if you select say the top 10 the top 10 of the pivot table is shown and it's reflected in the pivot chart below and also for the selection ground total uh, the total is shown uh, with a percentage uh, which is expressed as a percentage of the total number uh, total amount of sales for all states also you also have intelligence in terms of the remainder uh, what the total is uh, those are the items uh, from uh, states with ranking of sales value from 11 to 48 and the amount relates to those states as about four hundred thirty one thousand dollars and that is 32 percent of the the full total across all states when you add the two together you're always going to get 1.4 million but 1.4 million and 100 percent so if i chose uh, extended that to to the top 20 so this time you've got the top 20 shown and top 20 shown on the pivot chart the selection grand total is about 1.1 million and that comprises 87 percent of all states across all states and the remainder is about 176 thousand dollars 13 percent you can also dynamically choose say the top uh, the bottom 10 so say from sales rank from 38 to 48 um bear in mind when, when i said earlier that the the bottom ranked state is main uh, that will always show uh, when you're selecting the bottom N and in this case it's comprising only around about 20,000 in sales and 1.5% and the remainder is 98.5% choose the bottom 5 so the amount gets lower and lower and everything's all dynamic the pivot chart is being updated as well if you can choose a, a middle selection say from 25 to 30 that's six items um, going from Tennessee to Missouri. That's only 4.1% and the remain is 95.9%. You can also choose um, the, uh, the items which are not uh, consecutive. So for example, you can choose say item 10, item 20, item 28, uh, and item 45 in terms of sales rank number. And that's 4.8%. 65,000 in selection grand total and the remainder 95.2%. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I did this. So here's the steps, 13 sets which you need to use in order to create the dynamic pivot table. And I'm going to be referring to these steps uh, along the way. So here's the data set. Um, the data set is a simple data set comprising of state and sales. So the first thing we do is we convert this normal range into a table. You can do that by pressing Ctrl T or you can go into the insert on the menu and click on table. You make sure that the my table has headers checkbox, which is uh, checked in this case is checked. OK. When Excel turns this into a banded set of data, then that's your indication that Excel has turned this into a table. And you will also see the design tab. Uh, opened uh, under table tools. So change the name of the table to something more meaningful like say table sales data. Okay, next what you need to do is you need to insert a pivot table based on this data set which is now a table. So click on pivot table and um, put it on this worksheet. And let's paste it here. 
um, cell E5. Click on OK. And so what we need for the ranking item, we need state. Put that in the rows area. And for the sales, uh, we put that in the, the values area. Okay. And you can change the value of the, the data type of the sum of sales into uh, currency. So choose currency there. And we'll choose dollar. Okay. And just close the table field box. And now, next we need to do is we sort this in ascending order. Uh, sorry, descending order. So you can click on some of sales, and then select sort, and then select largest to smallest. Right. So the next thing we need to do is we need to add a calculated field to this pivot table. So we go into uh, on the menu for pivot table tools, field items and sets, and select calculated field. And we'll call this sales state. Not state. Sales rank. And for the formula, all you need to do is just press one. Um, so this formula is going to, just going to be one and click on add and then click on OK. And so what Excel does is it automatically adds the calculated um, field onto the, the values item of the pivot table. If you open up the, the field list from here, you can see that the, uh, the sales state rank has been shown here. So what we do now next is we right click So I click on value field settings and then you can change the, the default name sum of sales to sales state rank and then show values as running total running totaling click on OK and close the pivot tables field. Now what this does is now the sales state rank because now running total is also uh, being simulated now to show that uh, the the states are now being ranked in terms of sales uh, from um, the highest to the lowest. So California is, is highest, that's sales state rank one. And at the bottom we've got main. main. main at the bottom. And that's uh, ranked at 48, and the total is about 1.4 million. So now that the initial helper pivot table has been created, what we need to do now is we need to go into the data table, and uh, not the pivot table, the data table, and then create a new column called sales rank, eight rank. And as you can see from the pivot table, we've got a, a sale, state sales rank, uh, depending upon um, what the, the sales value is for the state. And what we need to do is bring that um, ranking value and put it in the, the data table. So you do a VLOOKUP formula. The lookup value is going to be state. And the table array is going to be the pivot table. So in this case, we just select columns E to G. And the return column index is going to be uh, the state sales rank, which is going to be three, column three. And we want the exact match. So we'll choose false or zero. Press return. So now we have a state sales rank, and it should comprise in terms of numbers one to 48 for each state. And so if you've got repeating states, for example, Kentucky, then the state rank is going to be 20. So for example, you see Kentucky here, You've got a state sales rank uh, on the pivot table is 20, and that's being shown on the original data set, but is repeated for each uh, occurrence of Kentucky and different uh, state ranks are depending upon um, different states, and those rankings will be repeated for the different repeating.
thing. Um, so, so the next step is to create a copy of this pivot table. So select on any item in the pivot table and uh, in analyze, uh, go for select button and the drop down select entire pivot table. I'll in select the entire pivot table by the menu. So press Ctrl C to take a copy of it and then say from column I, paste it alongside it. Um, next we need to do is just hide the, the data table and the first pivot table out of the way. Just make it more narrow. Then or to fit these columns. And then select the uh, field list, right click show field list and the state sales rank um, which we needed to use before for the ranking we won't be needing it anymore for the second paper table so drag that out of the way close this box um, we'll change the row levels to 8 and the sum of sales we'll call that sales amount Right click the pivot table and select pivot table options but also uncheck the auto fit column widths on update that keeps the structure in terms of column widths of the row items the same whenever we make a selection so it looks more neater and professional okay so we refresh the pivot table and then what we do is we on analyze we uh, go for the insert slicer and then remember when we created the new column state rank, it's now appearing um, as an available uh, column for a slicer. Uh, previously we just had state and sales, now we've got state rank. Click on that and click on OK. And you should see 48 in terms of number items for the state rank, which is what we were expecting for the 48 states. Right click, go into size and properties. And let's choose for the number of columns 12 so it's easy for the user to select um, which um, ranking he needs or she needs. And then just expand it out the way so you can see everything. So it's already beginning to look like the finished article in terms of uh, the uh, dynamic pivot table. So you see if we select the first top five, the top five is now showing. Uh, California always being on the top. And Florida is being the fifth one. And then if we choose say the bottom ten, um, we've got Maine as we saw was the, the least in terms of value uh, for the ranking 48 and we've got it start from New Mexico. And also you can choose middle uh, rankings as well. So that's all fully dynamic now in terms of the, um, the pivot table. So the next step is to add the selection and remainder ground totals. I've copied it from another place within the worksheet and I'm going to paste it here. Okay, so the selection grand total is the grand total of the pivot table depending upon where you what you've selected in the state rank. So for example, if I select top five, we want this to be shown 687,770. Do that. Um, if I click on the selection grand total, the blue highlighted cell which is a merge cell and then we type a VLOOKUP formula and the lookup value will be grand total and the table array will be the uh, two columns for the pivot table i and j and we want the return column to be two uh, for the sales amount and we want an exact match so that's going to be four or zero as you can see 60 687,000 is being displayed which matches the uh, the updated pivotal grand total so if we say test that for top 10 we should get 918,000 which is correct there so the next thing we do is here this gives you the percentage of the selection grand total as a percentage of the the full total um, but before I do that and um, what we need to do is we need to unhide the, the first pivot table and what we need is we need the grand total here uh, for the unfiltered grand total 1.349 million 
So if you go back to the top and then do a V look up here for the grand total. And this time we're going to be looking at the first paper table, column E and F. And we want the return column to be sum of sales, which is two, and we want an exact match, so you put zero, or you can put one. So that's 1.349 million. So this will always be the same because the slicer doesn't affect the first pivot table, it only affects the the first uh, the second one, sorry. So if I select it say top five, the unfiltered grand total will always remain the same. And so the remainder will be basically unfiltered grand total minus the selection total. And for percentages, all we need to do is express the selection grand total as a percentage of the amount 1.4 million. And we do an absolute reference for W7, F40, and then copy the formula. For the percentage breakdown here. So the last percentage uh, in cell Y7 will always be 100% to represent the full total across all states. So if I unselected the uh, rank, state rank, it's all unfiltered, then we've not selected anything. So in this case, the entire pivot table uh, has been selected for the, uh, that's associated with the slicer and so the selection grand total should be the same as the unfiltered grand total with 100% will be applicable to both. So once we've done that we can hide the data table and the first pivot table and this pivot table the second one we just select it going to analyze entire pivot table and drag it up a bit here move the slicer towards the data table and then delete columns R and S and we can change the view so we can get rid of the gr uh, grid lines okay the header I've already got it here, so I'll just copy and paste it. Make this column uh, narrower. Last thing we need to do is uh, create a pivot chart based on this pivot table. So you have a visual representation of the selection. So if you go into, go into insert, and go into chart and select the clustered column chart and that will paste a uh, pivot chart based on the pivot table and find that and from the chart elements we'll take off the chart title and for the grid line sorry not grid line the, the legend We'll put the legend at the top and make that say font size 12. Okay, so let's test that now. Say, suppose we went for the bottom five, the pivot chart is updated with the bottom five results, and the selection grand total, remaining totals, all been updated. And the table is also being updated. Select the top 10. And you've got top 10 results. Go for a middle 25 to 30 in terms of state rank. Again, the items in the pivot chart is the same as the items in the pivot table. And the grand total is all being updated with the remaining grand totals being shown too. So there you have it. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next video.